or is it because of what you think? So I think all of that plays into being clear about who you are, why you are. Back to clarity. You look like you have a follow-up. Yeah, you know, I just want to make sure that people realize and be clear that you don't need like-minded people who think just like you. You need people who challenge you. Ne negative naysayers are very different than people who challenge you. It's true. It's true. And, to, and just to piggyback on that, so I think a true friend will do that. I think a true friend will be like, hey girl, check it out. Because I know who you are, and I know and I know your level of integrity, I'm seeing a little bit of something. You know what I mean? But if somebody who is not like-minded in terms of like that core value, they're not gonna call that out. So I, that's what I mean in terms of like-mindedness, having that same sort of value system to know, all right, we're on the same level, we can hold each other accountable and challenge each other. Here's a great quote, it says, we all need mirrors to remind us who we are. Olivia, who are you? Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, four actually has been coming up quite a bit for me. And just being with her yesterday and sharing the stage, it was it's amazing. I, I, I see so much of myself in her, that high energy, spunky, like so committed to making a difference, so genuinely, authentically um, passionate about people living a transformed, amazing life. Like, that's the only reason I'm on this planet. That's it, you know? And money's great, it's fun. Love playing, traveling, and like that. And she is the embodiment of that. And so I see so much of myself in her. Yeah. You know, people always talk about their downtime. Like, how do you handle your downtime, who is who you are as a person? Lillian, how do you handle your, your downtime? You know, um, my downtime has changed a lot in the last five years. Uh, I've always been one to pray and meditate and so forth. Probably in the last five years, that's something that I really regard as very sacred, and I spend a lot more time where I, not necessarily praying, asking for stuff, but just quieting my mind and being in that open space. And some of the greatest points of clarity that I have had have come not from another human being on the outside telling me, this is what you should do in this challenge, this is what you should do in this particular situation. But it's been in that moment of just being in that quiet stillness where you really have the communication between you and the creator and you have that open heart space where you can really allow whatever that needs to come in to actually come in. And then I've had huge ahas. And I believe and I know that because I'm in that space and I've been there very mindfully, intentionally for the last five years especially, um, that um, some extraordinary things have happened, um, including uh, the embracing of emotions that normally I would want to bottle up and not have to deal with because they don't feel good, but because I have been willing to open myself up and deal with that in my quiet time instead of being my gay personality, get her done, you know, just like run like the Energizer Bunny and you know pull all nighters, and instead do the opposite and quiet myself down and just be in that stillness take the time to, you know, I live by the beach, so I go to the beach a lot, and just sit and listen to that quiet, still voice, and I've had incredible insights, and interestingly enough, I have what I like to call God incidences that start to happen in a crazy-ass manner. You know, people call them miracles, people can call them serendipity, and they have them here or there. No. People who are close to me who witness a lot of them are like, Damn, it's like, holy cow, it's like, how do you do that? And I'm like, I'm not. So what you call it, instead of coincidence, you call it, it a God incident. God it's incident. a God incident. That's a great quote. It is. That is, a, it is, that is great. It's crazy ass. Hold on a second, I gotta go to GoDaddy and get that real quick. So, <laughs> we only got a couple more minutes, so here's what we're gonna end with. Everyone tell us your favorite quote that impacted your life. Let me on your own. I'm not here just to make a living, I'm here to make a difference. Beautiful. Uh, we say pretty much every day, because I live in the startup world, hope is not a plan. Mm -hmm. Nice. <laughs> My favorite quote is, better to ask and get a no, than to never ask and never know. Dream the impossible dream. It's possible. Mm -hmm. Man, there's so many. Um, <laughs> I would say um, true purpose is obedience to God. That is my favorite quote, and uh, that is because um, I truly believe that God has given us everything we need to do exactly what he's called us to do, 
And if we're obedient to that, then we have our purpose. Round of applause for our panel. Thank you so much.